there will be no local pollution, meaning there is no tailpipe emissions. Uh, the charging will be done through uh, electricity and the electricity which generate power plants because they are stationary, the con pollution can be controlled very effectively. For example, even if you continue to use fossil fuels, say from carbon, uh, carbon burning power plants, the carbon dioxide can be stored and not pumped into the atmosphere. It could be buried at sea and so on. So we have a pilot project working in Scotland at the moment at Long Gannett. But in the longer term, uh, the Scottish government is hoping to have 80% of electricity generated by wind and other renewable sources by 2050. Then you will have no uh, carbon and no local pollution either. What sort of savings can drivers anticipate uh, if they switch to electric cars? There are, when we as engineers we talk about saving, we talk not just monetary saving, we talk about three E's. This, that's our philosophy at this university. The three E's is the monetary economy, the energy economy, and the carbon economy, the environmental economy. So these are the three E's. Now with electric cars, at this stage, I suppose I can introduce one of our articles. It was published by Institution Mechanical Engineers, which is a very, very established body in UK. They ran this conference on low-carbon vehicles uh, some two years ago, and we presented our work on electric scooters. So what we found was, with electric scooters, you can drive 10 kilometer for one penny. That's excluding the cost of the vehicle, of course. But the running cost is one pence per 10 kilometer. In terms of carbon economy, the normal car, an average car, let's such as say Renault Megane, it'll emit 208 grams of CO2 per kilometer. The scooter will emit 33 grams of CO2, so it's one sixth straight away. That is if you use the fossil fuel electricity. But if your electricity coming from solar, as we have at Napier, we got a solar uh, wall here uh, on the outside of the building. That wall can generate enough electricity for 13 scooters all year round. So if we drive the scooter with solar electricity, the CO2 will drop to 3 gram CO2 per kilometer. So from 208 for a car, you are coming down to 3. So that is the scale of uh, saving. The lastly, the energy uh, economy, it's, it's in proportion to the, the CO2. So again, your your uh, propulsion charge would be something of the order of one sixth of what is required for a car. Uh, there's still a, a lot of uh, well, a lot of drivers are still a bit wary about electric cars, aren't they? Uh, they they don't have the range that they expect. Um, there are few places, relatively few places to, to top up. How are you going to educate them about that, about those aspects? Well, as you know, the government has been now switching its attention towards the, the plug-in places, that's what it's called. Uh, in London, for example, there's been talk of uh, setting up 4,000 locations where cars can be charged by the curbside. I've been to a meeting two days ago with the City of Edinburgh Council and they showed me a map in which they have identified all the plug-in places. So there will be something of the order of 15 to 20 places in the city of Edinburgh where the, the charge facility will be available. Of particular interest is plug-in places at the satellite uh, car parks you know, for the, the bus travelers. So say you're coming for five. You, you, the bus will bring you to the outskirts of Edinburgh and then you, you will have enough charging places there. So if you want to drive locally, you, you, you can charge your uh, vehicle at that point. So across Scotland, across the city, across UK, there will be a due course charge, charging places available. Now, what you're saying is a very valid point and that is perhaps one negative presently, uh, which doesn't go in favor of electric cars. A typical Nissan Leaf, for example, and I was at the launch, as I said, it will provide for a full charge 96 miles of journey. 
that's compared to some 300 miles you can get with uh, petrol or diesel cars. But having said that, statistically speaking, 90% of the travel in UK on a daily basis is less than 20 kilometer only. Okay, so if you have a fully charged car, it is enough to take you so for, for about five days. So that's really not a problem for commuters. Paolo, can you tell me why the, the course has been deemed necessary? Uh, sure, yes. Um, about a couple of months ago, uh, we've been requested by local governments uh, to run a training course on electric vehicles. Um, the reason is because local governments realise the importance of such technology. Uh, the European Energy Centre has been promoting really sustainable technologies and renewable energy for the past 36 years throughout Europe. And this course is just one of the um, one of the many <laughs> courses we run on such uh, sustainable technologies. Um, electric vehicles, specifically, is a growing technology. Obviously, and many uh, people from the public, the, the, audio, the general audience, is really asking uh, what uh, are the benefits of electric vehicles. And uh, by launching this training course, we want to answer many questions that uh, the audience has uh, really and uh, just making sure that everybody is aware and can make a, an inf informed decision also in, uh, when adopting electric vehicles. Local governments especially are very very interested on, on this technology um, as also Professor Munir um, highlighted uh, obviously the, um, people really need to decide if uh, going for electric vehicles or, <laughs> or ordinary vehicles for their, um, for, for their fleet of, uh, of, of cars for example um, and um, it's the most important uh, message that we want the, the European Energy Centre wants to uh, put forward is really um, the, the reasons why people should be adopting uh, electric vehicles. I mean, yeah. are, are people generally quite ignorant of the, uh, the benefits or the potential benefits? We, we feel, yes, that uh, people are don't yet are not informed about um, the, the potentials of electric vehicles. Uh, so this course um, is really f aimed uh, at uh, uh, ensuring people are uh, more, more informed. Uh, I mean, that, that's really what um, the European Ener Energy Centre has been doing um, for, for many years through conferences and training courses um, and also with the United Nations Environment Programme and leading universities such as Edinburgh Napier University, um, which is um, um, continuously working with us as well. Um, on promoting the best practice in renewable energy, the best practice in sustainable technologies overall, and uh, sustainable transportation is an area which um, we are now also moving into because it's uh, extremely important for society and to, to reduce all the CO2 emissions and reaching European targets that are required.